In this book, some of those people who speak at our seminars have graciously offered their time and expertise to help us answer many of medicine's most controversial and complex questions. What Alan and I have done is eliminated the hype and the promises and simply reported what the evidence is. Not what people want it to be or believe it to be. We simply provide the science-based evidence that has been produced by reliable clinical trials to support or debunk the most common medical questions. In other words, when you finish listening to this book, you'll know what's good for you. We've also done more than that. In settling those questions, we've made an effort to teach you how you can determine for yourself what's real and what's not real in medicine. For example, some of the clinical trials we've written about included as many as 100,000 people and lasted decades, while others had 12 people and were six weeks long. But in the media, both of them are reported simply as clinical trials. After listening to this book, you'll know what questions to ask about those headline claims, and you'll know how to differentiate between fact, hope, and hype. You know what the claims these stories throw at you really mean to you. In researching the topics in this book, we've gone to the physicians who deal with them every single day, the doctors on the front lines with patients, to find out what they see in their daily practice of medicine. In addition, we've looked at the clinical studies and tried to sort out those conducted according to acceptable scientific standards from those whose work may be less reliable. We've attempted to report both sides of each debate where that seems fair and never rely on only a single study to reach a definitive conclusion. Now, there are some claims that you can just go ahead and dismiss as soon as you read them or hear them. For example, as soon as someone tries to convince you that they're giving you information your doctor doesn't want you to know, Run away from this person and keep your hand on your wallet. Here is the absolute truth. There is nothing about your health that your doctor doesn't want you to know. Your doctor always wants you to know. If your doctor has valid information that is valuable to your health, then he or she will tell you about it. The reasons they might not confirm the stories you've read are that many of these stories aren't true they haven't been scientifically proven. Or, in some cases, he or she simply isn't aware of the claims. That does happen. But believe me, there is no grand conspiracy in medicine to keep people sick, to make money. And any person or company who makes that claim is trying to con you. There are 750,000 doctors in the United States and there are more than 5,000 hospitals which employ millions. As Ben Franklin said, three may keep a secret if two of them are dead. In fact, as you'll discover, the vast majority of health-related products sold in this country are not legally required to be tested or proved to have any value at all before they are put on the market. Prior to 2007, Companies didn't even have to prove these non-prescription products were safe. Currently, there are more than 30,000 vitamins, minerals, botanicals, sports nutrition supplements, weight management products, and an extraordinary variety of specialty supplements fighting for attention from consumers. And not one of them is subject to any rigorous tests of their efficacy. Many of them have little or no value, but you couldn't know that from their advertising claims. The only way they are going to attract buyers is by making big claims. Legally, manufacturers and marketers can say pretty much anything they want to, which is why they often make such dubious statements as a 14-month informal study of one type of supplement where 51 out of 65 patients with stage 4 cancer became cancer-free when they added it to whatever they were doing. The only legal right the government has 
is to determine whether or not they are safe. And even if they prove to be dangerous, it's difficult to get them off the shelves. This doesn't mean some of them aren't valuable and can contribute to your overall health. It simply means there is almost no way a consumer can determine which of the numerous competing claims are true. Conversely, there is a lot of really valuable information that you probably don't know about because it hasn't been definitively proved in tests and so it hasn't been widely reported, even though the case studies and the statistical data are intriguing. As in almost every other field, the reason for this lack of definitive proof is money. If a company can't earn a profit from its investment, it isn't going to spend the money. Aspirin, for example, is truly a miracle drug. Much of what it is capable of doing is already known. It can cure a mild headache or fight a fever. It can cut down the number of heart attacks. And recent studies have shown that at relatively high doses, it apparently reduces the incidence of colon cancer. But many additional claims about its value will never be tested because aspirin is in the public domain. No one owns the patent rights to aspirin, and so, understandably, no drug company is going to spend the tens of millions of dollars necessary to conduct valid clinical trials. Even if they discover significant information, they won't benefit financially from it. So the primary means to get such studies done would be through a grant from the National Institutes of Health, a university project, or some philanthropic benefactor. That does happen, and we have reported on several of those studies in this book. There is also a great amount of intriguing scientific information that could affect your health that has not yet been clinically tested and, in fact, may never be. It's difficult being a medical consumer, excuse me, a patient. It's almost impossible to know what claims to believe, what products to use, which media outlets to listen to. There is a long history of snake oil salesmen in America, and they are still out there selling their portions. It's possible that some of the subjects we've covered may not be of interest to you. Skip those parts if you'd like, but please come back and listen to them all because the information in each section will add to the knowledge you need to understand those great claims about medical breakthroughs we hear about almost daily. After you've listened to this book in its entirety, you'll be equipped to determine for yourself what's good for you. In the printed version of this book, we've also added a completely cross-reference index. It's quite good. We've done that because many subjects are mentioned in several different entries, and we want to make sure you have access to all the information you need when you need it. If there is a specific subject in which you are interested, the index will enable you to find each place we've written about it. It is our belief that when you finish listening to this book, you will feel empowered and want to share this information with others. We are confident you will have a greater understanding of the medical world, that you'll be able to differentiate between respected sources and those people simply trying to sell you their product, and you'll have the knowledge you need to navigate a path through the complicated world of modern medicine.